Hi folks, my name is Jen Wheeler. Uh, I work for Street Law. Welcome. Come on in. Get my things together. Um, so today's uh, webinar is uh, all about using Street Law's deliberation resources um, for at-home learning. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about how these resources are traditionally used um, and then how you might be able to adapt them for uh, your own learning as well. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of take a look at the materials and uh, access those materials. Um, so the general link for uh, today's webinar is up at the top. You can either enter in that uh, URL or you can use your phone if you want to pull it up, pull up the resources on your phone. You can use that QR code um, in order to pull those resources up. Um, if you've never seen a street law deliberation reading before, and you, you might want to just take a look at one right now. So in the bottom right hand corner, that QR code will actually just pull up a PDF immediately of our uh, compulsory voting street law deliberation reading. So you'll be able to see um, kind of the reading just as a PDF on your phone so you can kind of flip through it and see what a street law deliberation reading looks like. Um, they all kind of follow that same, that same format. I also dropped the link in the chat for uh, the materials for at-home learning. So here's our uh, agenda for today. Um, for this webinar, we'll kind of go over some, some introductions. I'll talk a little bit more about myself, about street law, give you a chance to introduce yourselves. Um, and kind of have an overview of, of what we'll cover. Um, then I'm going to share what our resources are, so you can kind of get the full picture of what all of Street Law's deliberation resources are. Um, I'll then talk about some of the strategies we have for at-home learning, uh, different ways that you might use these resources um, for what's currently happening with you and your students, and, and then we'll have some time for Q&A and then wrap things up with some, some close, close out next steps. There are a bunch of different ways to participate in this. Just in case you've never been in a webinar before, I'll let you know that I can't see you, um, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and I can't hear you unless I call on you. So there's a couple different ways that you'll be able to participate in this webinar. And I'll kind of, as we go through this, highlight uh, exactly different ways that you'll be able to participate in this one hour webinar. Um, so, to chat to everyone, you can go to the chat um, webinar, the Zoom chat space, which is under the dot, 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 if you see it, if it's not just right there and obvious. Um, and there's kind of two different things that you could, two different like audiences that you could type to. You could type just to panelists and you can type to all panelists and attendees. There's gonna be times when I'm gonna ask a question and it would be great if when I ask that question, if you could flip the two to say all panelists and attendees so that your answers can be seen by everyone and that can kind of be advice that folks get across the country that, that, you're, uh, that you're offering. If you have any kind of technical issues, um, you want me to repeat something, um, you know, if, if my audio goes out, um, then you can uh, go to the chat button and switch that to to just panelists. And there are actually a couple of panelists on right now, so they might be able to get back to you as well. Um, but that can just let me know if I need to repeat something. If you do need for me to repeat something because my audio goes out um, and not just because you, you didn't pay attention for a moment, um, let me know kind of about where it went out and I can, I can uh, catch you up. For the Q&A, the Q&A, um, when you ask a question there, it gets uh, dumped into the panelists um, kind of inboxes almost and lets us know that you have a, a question and sometimes we'll answer those questions um, immediately if, they, if it makes sense to answer them immediately and sometimes we might hold off on answering them. Um, we do have a kind of a designated time to, to address some of these Q&As as well. Um, only we can see the questions that you ask. And then finally, there's a, a, an option for you to be able to raise your hand, and that's under the participant button. Not so that you can ask or answer a question verbally, and we'll open that up every so often if anyone wants to um, 
have something to say uh, and it's just going to be easier to say it out loud. Um, we'll give, give you those options. So that's me. Um, and I uh, will try to, I think you can see me live, so I'll continue to, to stay live just so that you know that there's a human on the other end of this. Um, and that's my email address. If you have any questions about this, if you need any of the materials and don't remember how to access them, this is being recorded so you can go back and review it um, and kind of recheck in with all of these materials and strategies. Uh, this is who Street Law is. Um, and I should say, after I, I introduce myself, I'd love it if you wanted to introduce yourself. I see that we've got Carol and Deborah that are introducing themselves. Um, if you want to type in to all panelists and attendees so that other people can see who you are, let us know who, you're, who you are, what you're, uh, where you're from, and even what you teach. Uh, deliberation is, is um, some, sort of unique to street law in that uh, it can be used across a bunch of different types of classrooms. Um, not just in a social studies classroom. So if you want to chat and let us know who you are, um, thank you guys, Matt and, and Sarah and Jeffrey, for, for letting us know who you are, where you're from, and what you teach. If you've never heard about street law before, this is what we do. Um, we've been around for almost 50 years, and, and generally uh, we do as, as much as we can uh, with programs to teach uh, young people about the law and how to use it as a positive force in their lives. So let's talk a little bit more about our deliberation resources and kind of the origin of uh, these deliberation sources. And it's great to see how many different people are here from across the country and different things that folks do. So this is um, our deliberation uh, methodology is traditionally used as kind of an in-classroom, in-person discussion protocol. So this is, these are the steps of that protocol. Um, and as you, if you're familiar with structured academic controversy, this is kind of based on structured academic controversy. Generally speaking, uh, a deliberation allows students to explore uh, multiple sides of a contested issue and search for consensus cooperatively. Um, and while we think that that's best done in person, we also recognize that we're in a very strange time right now and that elements of a deliberation can be brought into this kind of emergency remote learning time. So if you wanted to do an in-person uh, deliberation, these are kind of the steps. I'm not going to go through all of the steps right now. I think we might um, save that as a different webinar for uh, when we're in another time and place. Um, but uh, if you're curious about kind of the way that a deliberation might work, generally speaking, um, there are, we do have on our website a video, it's like a five minute overview, mainly meant for teachers to kind of show how an in-person uh, deliberation protocol might work. So what we're going to do is, uh, I am going to share some, uh, a bunch of our deliberation materials, and when I share um, some of the strategies for using those materials, I want to try to maintain some of the kind of ultimate goals of a deliberation, even if you can't do deliberations in person. Um, and so those ultimate goals are that students get to explore a contested issue, a controversial issue, um, and it's multiple sides of that issue, um, that it is cooperative as opposed to competitive um, as you explore things, and that it is consensus driven so that students as they're exploring uh, contested issues through deliberations that they're looking for common ground between those multiple perspectives. So each of our uh, sets of deliberation materials has um, kind of, each of it comes in a pack and there's these different materials in the pack. Um, at, the, at the bottom I've linked uh, the stores, our street law store, which by the way is nearly all free. Um, to, to download. Um, each of the packs has a lesson guide that's kind of meant for teachers um, and can help you go through kind of what, how you can prepare and what the process is. That might not be that useful right now just because it's designed for in-person um, kind of work. Then we have a deliberation reading um, and, and the QR code that I shared before has the access to immediately be able to look at the PDF of the compulsory voting reading. But basically the reading um, can be anywhere from kind of five to eight pages, um, double spaced, and those 
it's usually about on a 10th grade level. It has kind of a, a hook, an introduction, um, background information, and then uh, arguments on either side, and then a kind of closeout. And it has all of the work cited so that students can kind of go back to the original source if they want to. All of the packs have glossaries. Um, all of them have quotes that are not in the reading, so it can kind of be supplemental. Um, each has a visual and suggested resource. And as we go through these materials, I'll, I'll share uh, how each of those resources could also be used for this at-home learning. Here are the topics that we have right now that are on our website for free, on our store website for free. Um, if you're looking for, if you're doing this for the very first time, compulsory voting is a great place to get started just because it's not that contested. So it allows students to kind of um, kind of just wade in the waters um, and uh, kind of see what this is like. And then some of them, obviously, as you can tell, those topics are a lot more contested. I will note, if you plan to use these, let's say, like six months from now, um, make sure that you always, when you plan to use them, go back to the store to re-download. A lot of the information when we're dealing with current issues changes. And so we try to keep these updated and we're definitely always looking for um, more feedback if you ever see that something might look off in any of these deliberation readings. So these are what are currently on our store. They're all free. You get all of those topic pack materials with it. We also have four deliberations right now that are not on our store because they're being piloted. And so that QR code, and I'll let you sit on here for a moment, that QR code takes you to a place um, where it takes you to a very short form that's going to ask your name and email. And we're collecting that information so that we can ask for your feedback on these deliberations. That's why we're in pilot mode. Um, and so once we get folks' feedback, we'll make these, um, we'll update them based on people's feedback, and we will put them on the Street Law store probably in the summertime. But if you're attending this webinar, you get kind of a first crack at them and, and get to take a look at them and see how they fit into your classroom. Um, you'll notice that there's now two compulsory voting readings, one that's in this pilot and one that's freely available. The pilot one is a shorter, simpler reading. And we're, we're actually working on a couple more of these, those that are not quite available, but um, we're looking to kind of make two versions of deliberations um, eventually available for some of these so that there's kind of a shorter and easier reading to do and also a more complex uh, reading to do. I'm about to, about to leave this page if you needed to, to scan that QR code, but you do have the opportunity to um, get these materials in other ways that I'll follow up with at the end. The other thing that might be really useful um, for at-home learning is handout B, which is part of our deliberation resources bundle. You can see that there's um, the link for it at the very bottom. We have four handouts that are a part of this bundle, but the rest of the handouts, handout A, C, and D, are probably best suited for that in-person discussion. However, as you can see, handout B is a graphic organizer to help students kind of work through the, um, work through the reading and, and select arguments for the reading. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but that's probably one of the best things that you want to use um, at this time for student learning. So now um, that I've gone through some of the resources, I want to take a moment to share with you how some of these resources could be used right now for at-home learning. And uh, it looks like one of my colleagues from Street Law has just thrown up some of the uh, th some of the links to these resources in the chat uh, space. So make sure that you're checking the chat space um, to be able to download some of these and take a look at them. So. The first thing I want to share, uh, the first strategy for at-home learning that I want to share um, is just a really basic one. And a lot of these start with actually doing the reading because you kind of need to, to understand the information in order to do something with it. Um, and so one of the really basic ways that you can have students use these materials right now is to have them read one of the topic readings and then uh, fill out handout B. And handout B just asks them to replicate the deliberation question and then 
select what they think are the best arguments on either side of the issue. So you can see this reading is about whether voting should be compulsory in the United States. And so they pick out two to four reasons that they think are best to support that, and then two to four reasons that they think are best um, that would not support compulsory voting, that would kind of keep things as is. Um, and so that's one way uh, to use these materials. And one of the things I want to kind of highlight um, with this is that we do get a lot of teachers who make a note that the readings can sometimes be challenging for students. And that's not to say that it will be challenging for all students, but one thing to think about um, is how you might help students approach these readings. And we've gotten a bunch of uh, teachers who've given us some of their tips for how they've helped their students approach these readings. And so I'm gonna share some of the tips that uh, those teachers have, have provided for us. So one is that it's a really good idea to review some of the vocabulary that's important from the reading before students even do the reading. So I've observed teachers um, going through the meaning of the word compulsory um, and talking about what it means and what voting is like now. Um, there are definitely some students um, in the observations that I've done with this particular topic who didn't even realize that voting is not compulsory. Um, so to make sure that students are aware of kind of what the status quo is with uh, voting, especially state by state, so in your state, what, what voting looks like um, and what it would mean to move to compulsory voting would be a good pre-reading um, kind of little resource to be able to do. Chunking the readings um, would probably be really valuable for some students. So saying like, I want you to read the hook in the introduction, respond to maybe some comprehension questions, and then allowing you to check in on those comprehension questions and see, are they getting it? Um, you know, do I need to go back and clarify anything? And then allow, kind of moving on from there. On our at home resources page, uh, which was shared at the very beginning, and maybe one of the street law folks can, can throw that link up there. Um, one of the suggestions that I added was to um, help students use some read aloud technology um, if they need the um, like some reading aloud assistance for some of the readings. And there are a couple different um, tech tools that can be used to read aloud PDFs. Um, and so that could be an option as well. And then one thing that you might also want to think about is just as you go through um, the uh, the reading yourself before you assign it. Think about what background knowledge students might need prior to doing this reading. And I'm gonna get in a few slides, I'll get to our suggested resources page. And some of the, the information that might help fill in students' background knowledge might be on that suggested resources page. So you could kind of pull from the suggested resources page in order to um, kind of fill in some prior, not some background knowledge that students might need prior to doing the reading. So that's one um, kind of way that you can use this reading and, and these materials in just a very basic way. And a lot of the rest of the ways um, that I'm gonna suggest kind of start with the reading just because the reading is where students take in the information in order to be able to do something with it. Um, so the next suggestion um, is if you have the technology um, to actually be able to simulate a deliberation to some degree using discussion boards. Um, and so what you're seeing on the screen right now is uh, something that I set up through the Blackboard Course Sites discussion board. Um, it's a free uh, discussion board resource. I will say it is, um, it's got a lot of tools at your disposal and it is free, but it is quite clunky. So it can be hard to use if your students are not currently using Blackboard course sites, you might not uh, want to use this, but some discussion tool that allows students to thread responses. And basically what you're seeing is kind of a simulation of the way that a deliberation works. Can you see me and hear me? Or can you see my screen and hear me? <laughs> All right, great. So sorry about that. Um, it's super windy here where I am, and I'm thinking that maybe that's, hopefully that's the only issue that's happening right now. Um, so I left off on this screen. I don't know how much we got to. The essential idea here is that you could replicate um, the deliberation kind of back and forth 
through uh, discussion boards if you have the access to be able to do that. Um, and so one thing to think about if you choose to do that is that you're going to have to give students the directions for kind of how to go back and forth with it. But um, essentially, you'd want one student to share the two best arguments for one side of the reading that they pulled from the reading, person two to share the two best arguments that they pulled from their side of the reading, and then it kind of goes back to person one, and um, back with person one, they read what person two said, and they say, here's an argument I really liked that you presented, and here's another argument that you presented that's in the um, in the reading that you just didn't present. I mean, it kind of goes back and forth from there with the ultimate goal for them to eventually, probably a few more um, kind of back and forths down, to start talking about where they see common ground between these two sides. Um, so you could replicate kind of the discussion method in that way if you wanted to. So one of the things I wanted to just pause right here on uh, this, slide for a second to get folks to share. Do you use some online discussions tool with your students um, that's free? And if so, what do you use um, that might kind of allow others to replicate this back and forth conversation just online? So if you want to click um, and in the chat section, look at all panelists and attendees, make sure that you're typing in there. But if you have any ideas for how you, um, how, if you want to share any of the uh, tools that you use to allow students to use discussion boards and go back and forth online, um, please share those. So I see some folks are saying um, Schoology and Moodle, Google Classrooms. Um, so certainly if you have any questions for those people that are saying Google Classroom, for example, then um, ask that question and maybe you can get some folks to respond within the chat uh, there. So here are a couple other discussion methods just because the goal of a deliberation is for students to kind of talk about these issues. We know that good learning talks from, comes from conversation and kind of making sense of things during conversation. Um, and so if you uh, are able to do synchronous online work where you're seeing your students um, on, on the screen and can use breakout rooms or even hold group discussion. There's one option. Um, and then if you can't do online work at all, I know that some of our students um, may not have access to the internet but can get work in some way um, and you want them to kind of continue the work that they're doing, there's a different option. I'll let you kind of read through those. So one of the resources that's in the topic packs is uh, quotations, a list of quotations. These quotes are not in the reading, so they're additional quotes. Um, and you could do a bunch of different things, I'm sure. Um, you can think of some different ways to use these. I know that one of the teachers that I've observed when he uses this with students, he cuts these out um, in his classroom and has students start the classroom by reading the, uh, the quote and kind of reflecting on it, and then eventually we'll move into doing a deliberation. But for at-home learning, one of the things that you might want to assign students to do is to read through the quotes and then ask them, does this quote fit best with the for side? Does this quote fit best with the against side? Um, or is it kind of neither? Maybe it's serving some uh, just general knowledge purpose. Um, and then have students write kind of an explanation to go with each of those. In my opinion, it might be best to do that after students have done the reading, just so that there's kind of a little bit more background knowledge to be able to sort these. Um, but ultimately you can, you know, if it makes sense for you to have students do them during, um, then you certainly can, or I'm sorry, after. Another uh, resource that we have is uh, visuals for each of these. And this is um, probably, in my opinion, our best visual. We were lucky enough to get uh, the copyright uh, to be able to use this. Uh, other uh, deliberation topic packs have maps that go with them or data charts. Um, some have some pictures. 
but each of the visuals also has questions at the bottom. Um, and so you might have your students kind of read through the visual um, and then respond to the, the accompanying questions. And you can see from those questions, the questions that go with the compulsory voting visual, um, that the questions are sort of scaffolded to gradually build into um, a final question that's kind of like a, a, a creation question. Um, so it could be a little bit of a bigger project for students to be working on um, for this. Each of the deliberation uh, packs, topic packs, also has a list of suggested resources. And I'd um, suggest as you use these resources that, um, or before you use these resources, I should say, that you um, read through them yourself first. I'd say that some of these resources, probably most of these resources, um, are student facing. Um, but every so often in the suggested resources section, we'll put a lesson plan in there or something that's a little bit more for teachers. So just make sure before uh, you share them with students. But these could be used in a couple different ways. Number one, I suggested before for reading strategies that you might want to kind of think about what background knowledge needs to be built prior to students doing the reading. And so, for example, um, if your students are about to do the compulsory voting reading and they don't know a lot about voter turnout um, and what it's like in the United States, which is kind of one of the problem statements essentially in the compulsory reading, uh, voting reading, you might want to share and discuss that article U.S. Trails Most Developed Countries in Voter Turnout prior to doing the compulsory voting reading. It kind of builds up some of that background knowledge about what's happening now. You can also, of course, use some of these as follow-up. So, for example, the three voting practices video um, is just a very short video, but students might uh, use that video to think about some other middle ground uh, on this issue of whether or not voting should be compulsory. Um, so there are a couple of different ways and, and sprinkled throughout all the suggested resources. We've kind of got links to websites, links to articles, videos. Our minimum wage deliberation has a kind of game that students can play to simulate um, what it's like to live on different wages. You could also, as kind of an extension to this, ask students to do some of their own research and add to the suggested resources list. If they've found something um, really interesting uh, on compulsory voting, they could kind of build their own suggested resources list. One of the things that uh, a lot of teachers think about when they think about extending even the deliberative discussions, the in-person discussions that they have students do, is they want to follow it up with writing. And that can still obviously translate to the way that learning is happening at home right now. So there's kind of two options um, that have been suggested most often. One is argument writing. Um, I, last year I was working with an AP government teacher and he had students discuss all eight of our uh, current deliberations. And then for homework, he would assign um, an argument writing after they'd done the discussion. So he'd say, all right, now that you've read these balanced sides, I want you to pick a side, use the reading. And then if you want to do some additional research, you can, but to argue in favor of one or the other side. The other option, and it's kind of a, a, a bit more extensive, but I, I thought a really cool idea. This idea came from a teacher um, in Chicago uh, with Chicago Public Schools. Her students had done a bunch of deliberations and she said, wouldn't it be cool to have students write their own deliberation, kind of using street laws model with the introduction, the background information and arguments for either side, a conclusion, resources that people can then go look up. And so that's another option is to have students brainstorm some different issues that, that they would want to write about and then write their own deliberation. So that I, mean, I think the especially challenging part of this, certainly when we write deliberations, is to try to make it as balanced as possible. And that's a very different way of writing than argument writing where you're trying to prove a point. Um, so deliberation writing as an extension with writing could be a kind of neat thing to do. So at this point, I wanted to pause um, and, and get some of your thoughts as, as we've gone, been going through uh, the materials and different ways to use these materials is uh, I've got two questions and you can choose to answer one or both. Um, but I'm curious about how you might use these materials with your students 
in one of two ways. So how might you use these materials with your students online and at, or at home right now in our current situation? But also some of you might be on this webinar because you're thinking about uh, hopefully the fall and the next time that you'll see, or maybe it could be sooner, um, but the next time that you see students in person. So this question is, is basically how might you use these materials either right now or eventually when you get back into the classroom. And I'm going to pose this as kind of a two options for a response. If you've got some thoughts um, that you want to share in the chat box, make sure that you, you select two presenter and all participants. Um, and that just lets us know like, hey, maybe you really like the idea of having them, um, you know, look through the quotes and you have a cool idea for how you want to share it with students. That would be a great thing for the other attendees to be able to see is how you would use some of these materials um, right now with your students or um, how you might use these materials eventually when you get back into your classrooms. So I see that Christy said, um, Christy actually said it just to the panelists, so I'll read it out um, to everyone. Make sure that you click to all panelists and attendees. She said, I like the idea of using a cartoon and having students react to it, summary, summarize the ideas from reading it, and doing research on that cartoon's kind of thesis. That's a great, uh, great way to use the visual that we have. And if you want to respond verbally, now would be a time that we can call on people if you've got an idea that you'd like to share. Carol shares that synchronously having them do the breakout and actually discuss these would be awesome. And especially in a US history class, I think that that's um, linking the current questions with the history. Uh, a lot of the background information that we have in each of the deliberations has linkages to history and kind of how they fit. Yeah, David, I hear you. If students might struggle to read these, it might be easier to do this in person sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna move on uh, to the next section. Certainly continue to write out your ideas for how you might um, use these materials uh, in the future. Um, to anyone who's hoping this webinar wouldn't be an hour, I think, uh, I think we might be on track to be a little bit uh, over a little bit sooner than four o'clock. Yeah, Lynette, the breakout rooms, I think is, is a good idea. So you could actually replicate some of the the uh, uh, deliberation methodology, um, though directions are very important there, you're right. <laughs> uh, so this next part is just an opportunity for Q&A, um, for you to ask questions and for us to answer them about uh, the topic of this uh, webinar. So there's kind of two, um, two ways that, that it might be easiest for us to see the questions that you're answering, because as you can see in the chat box, um, there's a lot happening, a lot of uh, back and forth, and we want to continue to allow people to um, share their ideas. So if you have a question uh, for me or for one of the other street law staff, uh, Kathy Ruffing is on this um, as well, um, you can either use the Q&A section or uh, the raise your hand, um, which is under the participant button to ask a verbal question. And I'll sit on here for a couple minutes just to make sure that people have a little bit of thinking time to think about any questions they might have. I see that Tammy, our friend from Arizona, has um, is working on integration with English language arts. We've definitely had a lot of uh, ELA teachers use these materials and, and um, even some science teachers. We have a, a deliberation on fracking. I think a math teacher could certainly use the deliberation on, um, on minimum wage. So 
So Karen is asking in the Q&A, is there any PD uh, that we have available for deliberations? At the moment, no. Um, we always do a deliberation session in our Supreme Court Summer Institute. Um, and typically, uh, we'll do some deliberations when we get brought out to work with different school districts. So if it's something that you think that your school district might be interested in, um, and you want to kind of link one of us up with uh, maybe your social studies coordinator in your district, um, we often do uh, like deliberation specific PDs in districts. And then sometimes we'll do um, deliberation sessions within our larger teaching for civic engagement PDs that we might do um, around the country. Yeah, so Mark, uh, hi Mark, uh, is asking about the read aloud technology um, that I mentioned that would read aloud PDFs. To be quite honest, I have not explored it myself. Um, I just looked up whether that functionality was out there, and it is. Um, so if anyone in this webinar right now actually has used um, read aloud technology for a PDF and wants to drop some hints into the chat, um, that would be great. Mark, in the at home resources page uh, on the street law website, I linked uh, a website that allows you to do that. Um, so when you look at the at home resources, you'll see the link that I provided. Um, but certainly if anyone else has had um, success with read aloud technology for PDFs and wants to add something into the chat, um, they can. Mark, I'm happy to follow up with you a little bit after this too, to, to explore it more. So Kathy, we've got a question uh, here on landmark cases. Um, and if you see it and want to respond, I'll give you a chance to respond now. Um, if not now, then Sarah, you might want to follow up with us um, by sending an email. You see it? So I'll just say that, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, that we don't have any specific um, PDs right now um, or webinars because we are in the process of updating landmark cases. Um, we're hoping to launch July 31st, a really updated, um, more robust landmarkcases.org um, website uh, then. So there might be some things around that, around that. And if you're talking more generically about landmark cases and not specifically just the landmark cases um, website materials, uh, I am doing one on AP government for AP government teachers that deals a lot with um, applying the, a lot of landmark cases, the 15 that the, um, that the AP governor, the AP GOPO um, folks have to cover. So generically landmark cases could be covered there and um, look, follow us on social media um, or get our e-newsletter because when we launch the new um, update to landmarkcases.org, there will be some stuff around that. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, for folks asking about other resources that Street Law does, like uh, landmark cases, for example, um, the AP government, um, in a moment, I'm gonna to get to some of our upcoming resources, um, or I'm sorry, our, our, our upcoming webinars. Um, and so you uh, can see what might be of interest there about other stuff that we're doing that's coming up. Um, and then also eventually, uh, pretty soon, I'll share my email address again if you have um, a particular um, desire for something that we haven't addressed yet. And I say that Kathy in the chat box just shared a, a link for read along technology. About 30 more seconds for any other questions that might pop up about this stuff.
Cool. All right. So let's close this out. I'll share with you a few different ways to access these materials um, and what's coming up. So Street Law has been working on regularly updating this page, the Street Law uh, materials for at-home learning. Um, and so, you know, from week to week, you might want to check in and see what's new. Um, what you're looking at right now is just the overview, but if you clicked on that resources page, you'd it, uh, drop down to a bunch of different uh, resources. We have been um, recording all of these webinars. So if you wanted to go back and review this one, or if you wanted to watch a webinar that Kathy has already done, you'd be able to see those webinars linked under that resources page. Everything that I've talked about today, all of the instructional strategies that I've talked about today, all of the resources that I've talked about today, all of the links to those things are on this page under resources. So we've tried to put everything in one place for what we've been talking about, uh, how you can adapt street law materials for at-home learning. Here's just a bigger uh, overview of other things that street law has. So we have hundreds of case summaries of different Supreme Court cases, current cases, recent cases, um, past cases, the 15 required AP government cases. If you have Supreme Court cases that are a part of your state standards, we probably have case summaries for them. So there's lots of them on our store.streetlaw.org website. Um, we have lots of other government civics and law lessons and resources on that page as well. We have instructional videos. So I mentioned before that um, we have a five minute instructional video for what a deliberation might look like if you were doing one in person. Um, and so you could view those instructional videos. We've got lots of mock trials and Kathy recently updated our at home uh, resources to share some ways that you could adapt mock trials and moot courts for at-home learning. I've seen that we've had some law teachers uh, join us and someone even mentioned uh, coaching the mock trial team. So certainly visit the at-home resources page so that you can check those things out um, and uh, see how mock trials can be used online. Right now on our store, we have eight deliberations. And I also shared with you that we have four more that you can access that are pilot. Um, and you can access all eight of those deliberations and the four more that are pilots, they're all linked on the at-home resources page. Um, so you could view them there if you wanted to see even the pilot links. Um, if you're just interested in the current deliberations that are freely available, we have eight of those and those are on the store. This is what the store will look like when you go on to it. When I say store, I want to remind you that nearly everything on here is free. Probably everything that you actually want to use is free. Um, but this is at store.streetlaw.org. You can search for things. Um, so you could search if you wanted to search compulsory voting, it would bring up the compulsory voting right away. It, I would suggest if you're going to download a bunch of things, it might be a good idea to, to register. Um, just because if you're going to do it multiple times, it kind of saves you a little bit of time. It will take you uh, to a place where it looks almost like you're going to have to pay. And then at the very end, as you can see on my screen, it says payment is not required for this order. So just make sure as you're going through um, the store that the things that you want say zero dollars next to them. And like I said, probably everything that you want is going to be zero dollars. Most of the stuff on the store is uh, free. We have social media. If you have social media and want to keep up with us, um, then we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter. We regularly update those with what's going on with street law. We also have an educator newsletter. Um, if you go to our main page, streetlaw.org and scroll almost all the way down, there's kind of a teal bar that allows you to uh, go in and type in your information and then select Educator eNews and you'll get regular updates about the things that we are doing, but they won't be so regular that you'll be mad at us for spamming your inboxes. Here are our upcoming webinars. Um, we have three that are coming up um, on Tuesday the 14th. Uh, I will be joined by uh, Jen Rydell, who is the Library of Congress teacher in residence and a civics teacher, to talk about some of Street Law's uh, newer materials um, and additional resources and sources from the Library of Congress related to 
uh, six Supreme Court cases. Even if you're not a middle school teacher, um, it might be worthwhile to tune in just to, to learn more about some of those cases and to also make sure that you have access to those materials, which are right now not on our store, um, but could be accessible um, to you if you showed up to the webinar. Uh, Kathy will be leading a webinar about AP government on Thursday, April 16th. Note that that is a, an evening webinar. We've, she's run a couple of other AP government webinars at different times, and we're trying to kind of uh, offer them at different times to allow for different people's schedules. If you haven't viewed her other AP government webinars that she's already recorded, you can find them on the at home learning page. This one will be slightly different because, um, or maybe more than slightly different, um, because we now have a better understanding of what the AP government test will look like. And so we'll be talking about how you can use street law resources um, for that test as we understand it now. And then finally, something that we're really excited about um, on Tuesday, the 21st from four to five, we're gonna be joined by a former clerk to Ruth Bader Ginsburg and um, also a friend of street law and a former teacher who attended the Supreme Court Summer Institute a while ago. Um, and this uh, webinar is kind of a student facing webinar. Certainly teachers can join in, but we'd love for students to share um, their questions, to ask their questions about what it's like to be a clerk in the Supreme Court and the role that they play. Um, so these are the webinars that are coming up. They will all be recorded if you can't make any of them. And uh, that's it for me coming in under the radar with about a couple minutes to spare. That's our link to our at-home resources. That's my email address. Um, the recording for this webinar will be available pretty soon. Um, and along with the other previously recorded, it'll be in the same place. Um, and uh, we will have a follow-up email after this that just shares with you the um, some of the resources from today and also a, uh, an evaluation. We would love to hear from you what we can do to be better at this webinar thing. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, and thank you for your patience with my tech blunders today. Um, your time is appreciated and we're glad that you're a part of our community. Thank you guys.